Dr. Prabhu, tell us about what have you, the IRA achieved in the last, say, decade or so, particularly in the rice and wheat varieties, especially. The last decade in agriculture has been a very, very critical period because that was a time when the uh, globe was undergoing a recession in food and then prices were uh, going haywire and then productivity was uh, not at its best because of several things which the uh, world was realizing in terms of climate change related impact and the vagaries of uh, uh, some kind of uh, weather forecasting not working as the weather is actually happening. These kinds of uh, several technical glitches were happening at the same time when the globe was uh, warming up. And that was the cause for uh, unpredictable uh, kinds of uh, productivity in the farmers' fields. Mm -hmm. So it was necessary that uh, the technologies be provided for the farmers, which have a resilience in them, mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, changes that happen in the climate, uh, changes that have been happening in the cultivation aspects, including global marketing-related features, should have some kind of resilience for the farmer to go back upon, uh, live on that, and be able to survive successfully. Mm -hmm. So what IRA decided was uh, to target the development of varieties focused on not only productivity per se, but to adjust to the expected or unexpected changes that happen around the season in crops. Wheat, for example, was identified in Indian uh, parlance as a sensitive material for uh, temperature hikes at the time of grain filling, which is known as terminal heat problem. And uh, we realized that climate change is not happening just at terminal stages mm -hmm. of uh, maturity. It's been happening at uh, multiple uh, periods, right from planting, like the November period when it is planted, to the March uh, time when the grain filling happens and harvesting happens in the month of April. So uh, March was the only crucial period what was identified earlier. But the climate change uh, brought the factor of having the impact of uh, climate change based uh, vagaries, both high temperature or uh, unexpected rains or even frost uh, which was for a prolonged period. All those kinds of things happened all at the same time. So we decided to breed varieties uh, which are of this kind and uh, develop materials. For example, the first variety that came up in this was HD2967. Uh, wheat, wheat variety. Wheat variety. Yeah. Uh, you must also be knowing for a very long period PBW343 was uh, being used in uh, India, uh, mm -hmm. northwest of Plain Zone, covering mm -hmm. large areas up to even 8 to 9 million hectares at one point of time. But it had become susceptible to yellow rust. Mm -hmm. uh, yellow rust is uh, one of the major diseases uh, like the so called uh, black rust UG99, Uganda 99 race, mm -hmm. which uh, of course has not come to India. But, and we have been able to breed varieties against it. Uh, this yellow rust was creating a major problem. Mm -hmm. And we decided to uh, breed a durability of resistance to yellow rust mm -hmm. so that even if a new race comes in, mm -hmm. the variety will not succumb all of its sudden as it happened with PBW343. Mm -hmm. So therefore we built in what is known as minor gene-based resistance in the SD2967, mm -hmm. which prolongs the resistance uh, without causing the pathogen, the disease-causing organism, to build resistant based virulence or race. So this is one thing. Uh, and this is a full season material. Uh, this would uh, be, however, be useful only if now planting happens. To facilitate that, we had to breed the basmatis, which is in the rotation with uh, wheat in Punjab and Haryana, mm. have uh, early maturity mm. or timely maturity, mm. uh, and that too not using so much of water. So w what we strategized was to breed a variety of basmati which would mature about uh, 20 to 30 days before the other basmati varieties like Pusa 1121 which is also a very good basmati variety, one of the leading varieties today, most marketed variety in the country today. Mm -hmm. Or you can say in the world most marketed basmati is Pusa basmati 1121. Mm -hmm. But it has 140 days to 145 days maturity. So we want to breed material of uh, 110 to 125 days maturity mm -hmm. so that we can manage to give the wheat planting correct time uh, not going to the later November or December. Okay. So this was done by breeding this uh, 1509, which is known as Pusa Basmati 1509. It's a new variety. Which new variety, variety, which we also call Pusa Punjab Basmati 1509. It's the same material, Pusa Punjab Basmati 1509 or Pusa Basmati 1509. Mm -hmm. This has everything that Pusa 1121, or Pusa Basmati 1121 was mm -hmm. missing. Like it would, uh, if you give it good fertilizer, it would lodge, mm -hmm. uh, and it would take 145 days. And then it also shatters if, uh, the, uh, if the farmer is not able to harvest in time. Mm. 
So all those factors have been beautifully strengthened in this material. So the combination of 5009 in Basmati and SD2967 are fantastic combinations. Uh, a combination of which kind has never been produced so far in the history of blend evolution or otherwise mm. in India. So that's a big uh, system-based boom to Punjab and Haryana farmers, Uttarakhand farmers, Western Uttar Pradesh farmers, uh, and Himachal Pradesh and Jammu and Kashmir areas where basmati and wheat rotations. And are. how much would be the impact on the farmer, farm income and farmers? Yes. Uh, oh, oh. As such, so the greatest advantage in having this combination is one. There is about five to seven irrigations saved by Pusa Basmati 1509. Mm -hmm. And that irrigation is more than sufficient to meet the entire wheat irrigation. Mm -hmm. So the entire wheat irrigation cost is saved mm -hmm. with the Pusa Basmati 1509. And then the yield, which was uh, uh, say around about uh, four tons or 4.2 tons, mm -hmm. has now crossed around 4.8 to 5 tons average yield. Mm -hmm. And there are farmers I know who have been able to take from the wheat able to take more than seven tons to seven and a half tons with this material. Mm. So there, there is a lot of agronomical uh, combinations the farmers can give mm. without investing too much and gain everything in terms of net returns. So together with uh, 1509 and uh, 1121 in Basmati and 2967 in wheat, a farmer can make as much as two lakhs, uh, around two lakh rupees profit per hectare profit per hectare mm -hmm. and that's a great uh, uh, say uh, a profit for a farmer in this belt uh, that's there's a great thing that happens and uh, around two lakh uh, per uh, profit uh, per crop uh, per uh, year to a farmer will make him sustain with agriculture as a profession which was uh, somehow uh, uh, on a tottering scale because of uh, recession and global prices but this has uh, breathed in new life and younger guys who are now seeing the value in marketing such materials mm. and the possibility of building between the two crops because of the time available a vegetable or a commercially viable uh, crop such as uh, mung bean or even mustard for that matter short duration mustard they are all fantastic combinations available now in this system and that will only mean higher income than the two lakh rupees i'm talking about so this is what has been the major uh, achievement yeah. what about the vegetable varieties mm. the role of ira yeah helping farmers well. yes uh, see vegetables is uh, not as organized in uh, say indian farming condition as is the major cereal crops mm -hmm. that's principally because the areas of a, of a variety or uh, of a vegetable in a village is a small uh, mm -hmm. scale compared to that and marketing because of perishability is also not that organized mm -hmm. as in the case of mandi system in the uh, cereal crops or other crops so therefore it was necessary to diversify in order to facilitate every small nook and corner based changes that happen in agriculture including simple availability of water mm. or the depth of water from which pumping has to happen mm. or the soil patch where uh, other crops are not able to grow. So you uh, fit in uh, different varieties adaptable to any of these small things uh, and then be able to make the farmer available uh, tool for making money. For example, onion is something uh, which is creating a lot of problems with the Indian markets. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't come from West, it doesn't come from Nasik area and wherever it should come from in time and then the price skyrocket. Yeah. So instead, if you are able to develop your own material mm -hmm. which can come to maturity by the time the market uh, starts demanding for onion, that is the month of October, mm -hmm. September, October, November, that's when the onion is at the least available status since the previous stock would have been exhausted by that time. That is a variety that is in demand. So IR has developed such a variety which is almost looking like a kharif onion. Normally kharif uh, onion is a winter crop. Mm. So we have a kharif based onion which can be planted in July like a cotton crop uh, or late sown cotton crop or uh, a late plant, transplanted rice. So you grow onion in that time and be able to harvest it in October so that you can take a normal wheat crop and be able to uh, get to the market large quantity of onion because the yield is also not low. It is about 15 to 20 tons per hectare. So you are expecting a, uh, also so that's a revolution. That's onion a revolution. crop in northern India as well. Yeah, revolution. And then so which means more. markets for onion have to develop, develop in northern, northern India, India too. As well. Not just for uh, the export, uh, sorry, not just for the uh, sake of receiving uh, mm -hmm. from other places, but also to dispatch to other places. Mm -hmm. uh, this area, Punjab, Haryana, has to do that. So that's a great opportunity. So one can alternate basmati with onion mm -hmm. on an alternate year. Uh, or divide the field into two portions. So half portion can go to onion, half portion can go to basmati. So that both have higher price resilience and uh, demand kept maintained in the uh, market. 
Because if you had too much of the production of something, the demand uh, definitely would go down. As long as the export market is there, it's working. But you don't know. The limits can always get um, closer to that. So therefore, these options are there. This is an example I'm giving. Mm -hmm. Similarly, in the case of uh, carrots, we had done, done uh, wonders from IRA, where uh, you must know, uh, normally uh, there's a whitish core in when you cut the uh, cross-section of a carrot will give you a whitish core of about, uh, say, uh, one centimeter to two centimeters, mm -hmm. and then surrounding circumferences of one inch or so, one and a half inch, depending on the girth of the stem. So that white core is not desirable for any purposes, whether it's for culinary uh, purposes or for... Is it most of the waste, basically? It is wasted. Yeah. So we have developed a material which is self-cored. Mm -hmm. Like, it has nothing to distinguish from core and non-core area. So 100% carrot is utilizable. Mm -hmm. And then it has uh, everything that is desirable in terms of the time of its maturity, availability for uh, marketing at different levels, uh, early market availability, late market availability, all of it. So we have got multiple varieties of carrots. That's another reason. That has already seen an impact in Hisa, in Haryana area, where uh, region is called carrot region. Mm. It's known as uh, carrot gum, <coughs> gajar gum. Mm. So it is that kind of a thing. So these revolutions do not get registered uh, globally or even nationally because they are localized uh, developments. But yet, the farmers who undergo this revolution have the same kind of, uh, say, advancement and development like any other global technology-based development. So that's that's the point. So more such localized technologies is what we are focusing on, like adopting villages where there was nothing happening, marketing was very poor, people had no job, joblessness and uh, other things were taking over. So they were not uh, able to do their own economic development, are now able to develop their own cells by being able to produce what they can, especially for example, Mewat region in Haryana. Uh, so the extremely poor. Yeah. Huh? Backward isn't it? Yeah, very poor uh, and backward area. Today is not really backward. If uh, people travel there, I request you to go over there. It's a scene to be believed. Uh, you have to see it and then uh, it's a scene that's worth watching, uh, worth telling the world that there is nothing in agriculture that can be permanently thrown up as something that is impossible to cultivate, impossible to make that soil productive. There are so many technologies available today. It's only a question of uh, ability of the farmers to take what is available to them, try them out. Of course, there will be difficulties. Teething problems are always there. Agriculture being natural uh, industry, there will be problems of nature, problem of not being trained enough, and all those kinds of things. Then availability of material in large quantity for the farming, because we are a research institute. We cannot be producing for commercial purposes. Hmm. Uh, we have fortunately been able to, with the encouragement from the government, able to develop what is known as business promotion cells with us and uh, we have now uh, capacitated to license our products on a commercial basis, monitor their quality mm -hmm. and then assure a quality to the farmers and we also at the same time be able to pro provide them enough material to plant which was not happening in the last decade. So this decade has seen all of this happening. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is WTO triggered. Nevertheless, there is a marketing uh, venture that is coming up from the farmers also. So many farmers in the IRA is the proud, uh, say, uh, proud to say this, we have converted so many farmers into seed producers mm -hmm. and that is a great thing because there is, uh, uh, even today, even if you produce more than four times of what you are producing today in terms of seed, mm -hmm. it will still be not sufficient to meet the demand. So there is enough scope. So mm -hmm. IR has done all this. And lastly, I must tell you, how do you foresee the, the Indian agriculture sector in the last, say, what, next mm -hmm. five, to, five to ten years? Yeah. Uh, and by nature optimistic. But I am also seeing this happening, therefore I am saying that with confidence, not by optimism alone. Uh, unlike what several socio-analyzers uh, uh, said, that farming is no more an enterprise that is worth economic uh, reliability or that is worth exploring in, it is only a, a no option left f uh, kind of uh, industry, it is not so. There is now increasing number of young entrepreneurs who are willing to experiment, who are willing to learn and then convert their value of soil which was convert, giving them just about subsistence to profitable agriculture. And that is visible mostly because of the technologies that's being made available to them. So now the scene is getting opened for the private companies to join hands with us both in commercializing the products and also helping us in enhancing the R&D so that they can pitch in with their R&D expertise in a small area which is converting this product 
into value added product mm -hmm. or processed product so there is so much of option now thanks to uh, increasing levels of uh, say purchasing ability in middle class and the demand for high quality food and the awareness among the farmers that there is technology which can give from the same product higher value in terms of better nutrition better uh, quality of the material in terms of proteins or any other ingredients which make the product more valuable with the same kind of investment they would make otherwise so that is not only value addition but higher profits so that is already happening and industries in small levels cottage industry like are coming together now mm. to harness this by contract farming and increasing reliability to going back to the farm to pick up the raw materials not only the cold chains have imp increased also the fresh vegetable marketing chains have increased in number and packaged vegetables are also available now for the asking in the markets which is all good for farming community because they can invest in that process in themselves is not a middleman that is required who would keep the farmer at at, at his level now the farmer himself is becoming a producer a partial processor and then engaging himself in marketing so that means within the family you have options for somebody to somebody to expertise develop expertise in marketing somebody to develop expertise in processing and somebody to see that the demanded material is planted in the middle field so all this is now happening therefore in the next 10 years agriculture will be the industry to look at and i think the sign is already there because the fastest grown economics over the last quarter is agriculture so lastly i must add that we have come a long way from the green level some time yeah. to this point where we have become yes. a biggest exporter of rice yeah. so we That's never true. thought of that basically yeah. So yeah. How do you like see yeah. the scenario from green revolution to yes. biggest exporter of rice? And yeah. that's true. Not only exporter of rice, uh, we are now almost coming to uh, number one exporter of wheat too. Not only rice, uh, we are competing very uh, hard with Australia and Canada on this uh, because China is no more in the export group for wheat, uh, and we are the ones who have been able to produce almost 100 million tons, 95 million tons of uh, wheat, which is uh, quite in uh, requirement of ours. and we have already targeted for the next uh, 10 years what should be your product production in wheat uh, other than rice i'm talking about and uh, this will give uh, enough opportunity for us to target region wise productivity levels mm. have uh, soil based technologies uh, ir has also developed such technology where a farmer can determine uh, what is the likely product he would like to have within a given potential of a variety and what is the kind of nutrition he has to give to enable him to get that kind of productivity so there is a, a highly uh, or, organized and ordered technological input the farmer can put now is a simple technology uh, which uses uh, buffers and uh, small time chemicals mm -hmm. he only has sample 50 grams of soil and then he will be able to know in this soil uh, to take 5 tons of a particular variety of wheat what should be the nitrogen what should be the potassium what should be the phosphorus what should be the micronutrient 1 2 3 4 that he knows so he only has to apply that and then he will be able to get very close to that potential so that kind of organized expectation of a product in agriculture was not uh, you know, not something that farmer knew earlier mm -hmm. now with that awareness farmer is willing to invest in applying the inputs appropriately not uh, say based on hearsay or based on previous experience and then believing that by adding that much more nutrient he will be able to get more it is not like that that he has now understood it has to be balanced one it needs to be put on a requirement scale and those technologies are also being enabled not just the varieties such things so that is what makes me believe uh, with the marketing strength that's happening market intelligence that's developing mandis being open to online arrangement of finding out what is the current rate ongoing rate mm -hmm. enabling farmers to register themselves and also pre uh, market their own product even before the uh, product is ready all those features will enable agriculture to survive and next 10 years will make only india as uh, possibly number one food producer in the country in the world i am very confident about it thank you so much for your time thank you